and was having our computer issues that was making the transition a little slower. What's going on? It's CJ Wilson, your host with Dope Talk in the spring practice. Um, time to get started for the 2024 season and get things rolling from the FSU um, standpoint. Was out there at practice today, saw a lot of good things, a lot of good things. I'm going to jump into some of those things and a few, some stuff that um, I feel like you guys should be excited for. Um, like I told you guys on Twitter, if you follow me a little bit today, or follow me, period. I've been telling you guys for a while to book your uh, tickets to Charlotte or, or book your hotel reservations to Charlotte. What I've seen today, man, that further verify, you know, those thoughts in regards to getting ready and booking for Charlotte. Before we get started, Dope Talk is brought to you by Dash5, the modern charge card for digital ad spend. <clears throat> Dash5 is a business-to-business corporate expense card program that gets you the highest cash back on the market starting at 3%. Most companies start you off at 1.5, up at Dash, try to go up the price at 3%. So, again, tap in with Dash 5. We added the um, the description. I'm sorry, the link in the description. Go ahead and tap in and get the business going. Knows like to take care of knows. All right, before we get started, well, not before we get started, I'm going to, I guess, go position by position. As you guys know, this was the second spring practice. Now, uh, until the pass officially come on, you know, it's a kind of, you don't get the full scope in regards to how the team looks. So like trenches, for example, you don't get the full picture for trenches. I'm going to still try to go position by position in certain areas, especially the skilled guys, and give you guys a little bit of background. I have um, James Coleman, former FSU fullback, um, that's going to join as well. He was out there at practice with me as well. It was a, a lot of people, a lot of recruits. Uh, Rob DeLoach shot my guy Rob. He was out there. We were hanging out watching some, watching some of the guys practice, practice as well. A lot of former players, too, as you guys know, Pro Day is tomorrow. Had Keon Coleman out there. Jared Verse was out there. Johnny Wilson was out there. Renardo Green. Fabian Lovett. <laughs> Who else am I missing? Oh, Jer Jermaine Johnson. He was in town as well out there. So a lot of um, Jordan Travis, number one quarterback in your hearts. A lot, of those, a lot of those guys were out there as well. So let's go position by position to talk about what I saw and some of the things that stood out. Let's start with the quarterback position. All right, we want to talk about DJU, the transfer over the former five-star quarterback, Clemson, Oregon State, and now FSU. DJ is a huge, huge quarterback, big guy, real big guy. Um, as far as his throwing and things like that, I think the timing, the timing and rhythm was off. It was a little bit off, and that's normal, especially with all the new pieces we have. We have new receivers, a new quarterback, the camaraderie, the the rhythm. It just isn't there yet, right? But for, as far as from an arm, a arm standpoint, the, the, the arm is live. Really big arm, drives the ball downfield. It was one throw where he was on the opposite hash, and me and James was talking about it, like, well, that's a long throw. But he pretty much put the ball on the damn rope and got it to the receiver effortless. So all the things you've been hearing about the arm is definitely true. This has, has to get more reps with the receivers, get the timing down, pad, and things like that. So I do think um, – Hold on, what the hell is going on my computer? Oh, there you go. From a timing standpoint, my apologies, I've been having computer issues the last couple, 20 minutes or so. But yeah, from a timing standpoint, things were off. Rhythm standpoint, still trying to get familiar with everything, but just from a live and pure arm and <laughs> using, the, using what we have as far as all this speed is definitely there. Brock Glenn, Brock looked very good, very good. He He's more, way more confident than he was last year. Coming from year one to year two, it was some throws that that was kind of here to miss. But from a confidence standpoint, a leadership standpoint, he looked pretty good. He was leading the guys. He was in command of the offense. Looks like a guy that's been around. And I told you guys, into the, the season, the bowl game, out the ACC championship, rather, I was kind of skeptical of Brock. Not necessarily skeptical, but just still wanting to see more. I mean, the situation definitely wasn't ideal. A true freshman quarterback. Finding out he was going to start pretty much a few hours before the game, ACC championship. He missed half of the season due to his injury. But you transition to the bowl game, you guys saw he was actually pushing the ball downfield, trying to make those throws, attempting to make those throws. And that pr carried over to the spring practice I saw today. Um, a lot of confidence. He's bigger as well. Built by storms. A lot of confidence in regards to his arm. Brock is going to be a player for us. Of course, I don't think he's going to be a starter this year, but he's definitely going to push. He's going to push. Um, he's going to push DJU for sure. Uh, Luke Cromerhawk, from a quarterback perspective, Luke is still. He has a lot to learn. A lot to learn. The talent is there for sure. 
play my play my theme music. Florida State, your brothers, your team, your heartbeat. We some dogs. We ain't no puppies. Bro, no appreciate you. Shout out to the Super Chat. How, how you rich and got bad internet connection? <laughs> uh, man, I think it's my computer, man. We got this new um, got this new high tech camera that's really fancy, but I think my computer got to catch up. So yeah, man, um, I got to use some of that that rich money. I guess your your donation money rather and, and upgrade the computer. But I um, got my boy James Coleman in. James, what's good, bro? Yeah, we hear you. We hear you loud and clear. I was going position by position. Just talking about what we saw, what I saw rather. Um, what were your thoughts on the quarterbacks? Um, I think it's you can see where DJU is going to probably is the guy who has who's probably most ready to play right now. But man, when I tell you, bro, I, I put I put out a tweet. Brock, Brock said he ain't no bitch. So um, you know, he coming in to um to play um a little bit, and um when you saw him, the familiarity that he had with the offense um uh, kind of showed a little bit more than DJ. DJ's. Um, not necessarily, you know, obviously people could probably take this and try to pick it apart if you're trying to troll. But if you know ball, the defense is always ahead of the offense um, at this part oh, of the yeah. game. But um, I think also just getting so many moving parts, so many new pieces, um, you've got to – DJ's got to get used to the speed in which he's seen. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get that continuity. If this – you know, it was exciting to see this kind of competition in the spring – um, kind of gives us hope for the future. But if um, I come back in the Jacksonville practice in August and it still looks like this, then I'll be panicked. But if this is what the second day of ball practice looks like, um, it's pretty exciting um, developments. I can see the potential uh, for the quarterback room to be pretty damn good. Yeah, I was saying the same thing. You see the potential time was off, and that's kind of normal. First day of spring, or first week of spring, rather. We have a lot of new pieces, new quarterback, new receivers. So everyone's trying to figure out where they fit in within the offense and what they can do best. Right, let's move on to the running backs a little bit. It's crazy because uh, Rodell looked pretty good, but you said something to me um, in regards to Cam. Cam Davis looked damn good. Um, you thought Cam was who? I thought Cam was Rodell. Like you couldn't <laughs> tell me. You couldn't tell me that that's not a third year college guy. Um, right. The boy had been eating, uh, eating weights or or something. I mean, I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but he um. Like if he don't see another weight room, he's gonna be okay. Um, in his lifetime, the kid is um the kid is diesel, he's jacked. Um, and you know just some of the things that I just noticed, you know, being a former in the backfield and coaching that position, um, you know, at this point either you can run or you can't. Um, you, you ain't really teaching nobody nothing new. But when there's guys who have vision, you can see it. Um, it's in shorts, so there's no banging, real banging going on, so you don't get the true feel for feel for it but there was a situation where cam saw something that wasn't there um i mean it was there the blocking scheme was going to put it there but if you're running your normal track full speed you're not going to recognize that the seam is going to be right there and it's just the patience and the explosiveness through the hole but to go back to um um the bama back rodell um just to even like his pay i i, I feel i'm sorry I think I might have disrespected him by saying he's more of a Treshawn Ward type running back, um, which is nothing wrong with that. Treshawn was just extremely patient. Um, that guy has burst, um, and he's he he can be a home run threat. Um, he looks a little bit more um, toned um, toned up um, than what he did before. Um, and then you know I saw Sam Singleton. I didn't see very many reps with Sam. But Sam looked bigger, um, which, you know, Sam is another guy who's explosive. I, I got a chance to coach against him in high school. Um, and, you know, really, well, I mean, obviously, not to disrespect Lawrence Toafili, but Toafili is still going to be that guy. He's going to get his. He's a. It, it's it's going to be crazy because you're going to still see a, a backfield that's probably going to boast a thousand-yard rusher, a 600 yard rusher and probably like a uh, or, or close to a thousand yard rusher, a 600 yard rusher, and probably another four or 500 yard guy. So that's a that's a very healthy backfield. Um, and something yeah, that adds like to the yeah. receiving yards as well for Toy Philly, too. Yeah, Toy Philly is the guy that you want. You you want like if I was if I was advising Toy Philly, I would be like, you know what, let's just be Alvin Kamara. Um, we're, we're trying to we're our goal is a thousand yards all purpose. How we get to 1,000 yards is irrelevant. What we need to do is we need to get um, we need to get as much rushing, much receiving yards as we possibly can. Um, I saw him a couple times in routes, routes um, 
routes on the back with backers. Um, again, he's still a very difficult mismatch um, coming right there. But it, just overall, and I, not to inundate people with just short practices, the the amount of speed that you see at this practice is is crazy. Yeah. Um, and and again, it at this point it leads to the positions that are more instinctual, which are like your defensive guys. But like the defense is crazy. It's crazy fast. It's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, CJ, I got to do it, but um, it's the benefits of having a fuller D. It's long, it's fast, it's aggressive, it bangs hard. Um, you know, it's not <laughs> when you got a fuller when, when you got a fuller D, man, it's just a lot of good things um, tend to happen when, when you're trying to help reach when you're trying to reach somebody or help somebody reach their O. Um, you just got to have that big, long fuller D. <laughs> um, that's a grass and grass, and that's just what we had. Um, that's just what it's looking like right now. But it, all, all that, it was fun. It was fun to see a lot of local talent come check this out. Um, hopefully, turn the tide, change the narrative, stay home, play for the Jumbotron. And I mean, in your backyard, I got a chance to talk to a kid whose mom um, I went to school with, and I just said, you know what? I get it. I, will, I wouldn't want to live here too if I, if, if, if I suck. It's hard to be home and not be on that Jumbotron, but. If you're home and you're on that jumbo try, it ain't home. nothing better. It ain't nothing better than it. Right. So you're yeah, looking this to go back over, over the running backs again. Like like 36 said, um, Cam had a nice little run where it wasn't really there, but he made something he saw saw before it even opened up. And he was explosive through that hole. And that was something that people are questioning due to his size. Will his explosiveness still carry over? No worries on that end. Cam Davis is is still very explosive. Like I said, Toy Philly looks different with the added weight. Rodell, patient runner, but again, he has a lot of explosiveness down the field. And Singleton didn't really see too many reps, but from a size standpoint, he's way bigger than last year. Um, let's move on to the wide receivers. And just some, some of the things that I saw that kind of stood out from the wide receiver room. Tom Dustin Hill may be here. Uh, he had a great, a great, a great practice. Had about two or three bombs in one on ones. Had another bomb in seven on seven. I mean, when I say bombs, it wasn't even close. He left the receiver, the, the defensive backs rather, um, in the dust, and and just looks more comfortable within the system. And 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 people kind of saw that with the videos, the squad party, how he was acting, and things like that. He feels more comfortable within being an FSU and it's starting to show with his play on the field. Um, I think Dustin Hill is in for a big year. That I mean, yeah. If I had to pick three guys right now, um, I, I would go Destin. Thirty-six, you do. All right, we'll get James back going in in a few. But again, like I said, um, Destin Hill looked very good, very good. Luane McCoy. Um, I'm gonna get to the defensive backs in a little bit, but he had a one-on-one -on -one battle with um. There, he had a lot of one on one battles with Charles Lesson, but Lewayne McCoy really smooth in his route running, look pretty good. You, you there, bro? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? All right, go ahead. Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead, um, take. yeah. Um, Keem, um, definitely and again, going back just the battles with the secondary and the wide receivers were great. Um, you know, but it's not a situation where you're going to win every rep. But when you saw big plays being made, Keem made them. Destin Hill, as you said, um, Brown made a big play. Uh, really, just found a really a, a, a gap in the defense. Somebody got caught miscommunicating. He was able to catch it, and then you were at, he, you saw where he could exploit with the speed. Um, you know, uh, the way it was, um, was a corner blitz, and the quarterback read it perfectly. Uh, corner blitz the 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 was. Damn time gave the quarterback the quarterback gave the receiver time to make a play. And like you said, you got a kid like that goes back to the speed, right? You have a kid like Brown. You put him in space. A lot of good things can happen. Um, I, I'm curious to, to see what's going to happen with Benson and uh, and Portier. Um, those are two guys that got to get it together. Um, a guy that you know has it all. Like I want to make sure because I don't ever want to seem like I'm bashing somebody. But you know, there's this thing in baseball called the yips, like where you just can't do simple shit. Like you can't field. You can't throw a ball can't pitch, like things that you should know how to do. And just sometimes it seems like Deuce, Deuce Spain is like going through the yips or something, man. Like yeah. as far as big, physical, fast, explosive, yeah, he's got all of it. It's just when we talk about Keon Coleman dropping, we talk about Johnny Wilson dropping, like 
just Deuce just drops these routine things. And, and what was great was, um, now I will say this was encouraging, is you don't see him just fold. He got back out there, and you also see Mike continue to try to feed him the ball to try to build that confidence. But he also coached the shit out of him. Like he's, you know, yelling and, and getting up in guys' ears and um, just not not being, not being letting people um, be settle for being mediocre, um, which I think is a hallmark trademark of Mike Norvell. And um, what makes this t- – again, when people want to know what the pulse of the team, it's him. And I think that's <clears> – <throat> At this juncture, Mike is young enough, energetic enough to where he can be the guy that's going to always be the lightning rod to make the team go until he's able to consistently have that senior leadership around around that's expecting it. But um, when I look at the wide receiver room, I just see a lot of youth and potential. Yeah, to your point, it was a play in one-on-ones where uh, Greedy Vance ended up missing the, missing the pass, well, missing the breakup by an inch or whatever. And end up giving up on the play. Not necessarily, well, yeah, giving up on the play and kind of being down on yourself by not breaking up the pass. And Mike chewed his ass out, falls in regards to quitting on the play. Hell, that's a fucking touchdown. Okay, you gave it the damn catch, but finished finish the play and make the tackle. While you quitting on the play and getting down on yourself, you just gave up a 70 yard touchdown. So Mike was custom out of being on him for that. And that just proves or goes back to your point in regards to the post of the team is really Mike. And he's going to uh, make these guys go um, at the tempo and pace that he feels. Um, he feel is necessary. But again, I, I do agree. Destin Hill, Hakeem looked very nice, um, physically built, um, in shape. Last year, you know, that was one of the biggest, the biggest issues, just the shape he came in. Um, looks very good in shape. And of course, he's way more familiar with the playbook. The Wayne McCoy is the guy that looked pretty good as well. He was giving Charles Russell the blues pretty much all days and one on ones, which is a good thing. I love those guys battling. Um, another freshman I'm pretty high on that I like is uh Camden Fryer. He's going to be a good player as well. We saw a good play with um, Gibson as well, but he got back. He got a little, little tweaked a little something on a, on the get off. Um, yeah. Somebody that I do think you know started off hot last year, a lot of high praises for him this time last year, and even sometime in the spring was uh, was Jacobs. Uh, was it Ventravius? Ben um, You know he didn't do as um, great today, but. Um, Listen, man, exciting whites, man. Camden Fryer, definitely gonna have that as a section, like the or, or cold ass pilgrims. It was a it was a cap on cap on cap violence today. Um, uh, Luke Cromerhawk yeah, threw it. Threw it through, yeah. um, Cam, Camden yeah, yeah. Fryer, it was a good little connection there. Pilgrims looking out for each other, so I ain't mad at it. But um, just you know, it was, again, it it. it it looks fun. The guys had a little bit of juice too. We had a little. We had the first fight of the spring. Um, Raw, Raw, oh man, it was Raw. great to see that shit too. Uh, yeah, it was beautiful, wasn't it? Raws and and and, 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 and um, shit. We were just talking about number five. Um, Spain. Yeah, it was um, Spain and Raws, wasn't it? That got into the tussle. Yep. I mean, it was getting into it. You need that. They were talking shit. Um, Shane Brown's going around making sure people knew that his presence was around. It's just, mm-hmm. you got to have it, man. You got to have it. Yeah. Um, you got the edge. Moving on to tight ends. We, we Tight ends was a little bit here to miss. One thing that did stand out to me, you spoke about it as well, Landon Thomas. Uh, that mm-hmm. kid, he, he, he just looks different running his routes, moving around. He does need to get a little bit bigger as far as the weight room and things like that, but that's expected for a freshman that, you know, just been on campus for a month or two. But I'm telling you, Landon Thomas has a lot of potential. And we we also um, – the transfer, my apologies, uh, number 84. Uh, Morlock. Morlock was, was up and down as well. It was a lot of stuff that kind of – a lot of passes he had that he should have made, some stuff that kind of carried over for last year. For him to be that guy and be the sole tight end and kind of take over for Jaheim Bell, he has to step up and do a little bit more. Um, You know, and I think people we, – we've been spoiled because um, we, we – we force fed it. So I mean, even with Cam McDonald, you know, when people thought Cam McDonald wasn't that good, he wasn't really bad. He um he he was just he just wasn't catching it and getting you the extra stuff. But we really didn't get that from Jaheim Bell this year, like we thought we were going to get as well. But um we did have there was more things Jaheim could do than what Cam could do. But what what we're really going to miss is Biscuit. Um and we needed Marquise um this year as a blocking presence. But one of the 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 the, the things about Mike Norvell is that Mike Norvell runs a multiple system. So we don't have to be – we're not going to just be out here in in 12 personnel or or um, Houston sets, two tight ends. 
Um, we're gonna like if we need need be, we'll go out that bitch at twenty um, personnel, or we'll go out there and you know we'll we'll go two backs, we'll go three wides, we'll go four wides. We'll we can spread a team out and still be physical. But one thing I do want to say that you know people were worried about. I think raw, raw uh, not Ross, um, damn, um, Powers, the the one we were just talking about, the other right. type. Um, I think he can give us a little bit of something. He's a willing blocker. I think Jackson West is somebody that we got to yeah. get. That we're gonna yeah, we're gonna need to see step up, and I think he's gonna he's I think he's scrappy. And as a guy who's done that before, you ain't got to go out there and just you ain't like bro, them bitches two seventy five out there and going forward, you ain't finna just be like I don't even show me film of Brock Bowers every week putting an SEC defensive end on his back. What I need you to do is give me two seconds or get the fuck open. And if you can't do it, what we can do is we can put you, we can put packages in there to get the guys in space, which we really, which I personally want. I want to see Toa Philly on a backer. I don't, I don't really care if Merlock. Mer, the only thing that Merlock gives us is a huge frame, and I think he's still trying to learn how to get that. That's draftable. We'll be able to see the benefits of it, and God bless him. Um, I think he's going to probably be a three hundred yard guy um, if we get three hundred yards out of him. Uh, I think we've done we've done really really good, but Landon Thomas is going to be the guy, um, you know, in the future. And you fuck around and get you another one. Like if we can Ooh, somehow man. figure out how to flip, like I'm gonna tell you, um, yeah, a Jordan. guy who if he gets in the weight room, the bitch from Camden County. I seen that motherfucker. He is huge mm-hmm. and can run routes. I seen him run a screen against um, us at Mandarin in seven on seven camp. I'm not seven on seven camp. Excuse me. In a full in a full padded camp. And once that bitch gets his legs moving. It ain't no stopping them, and it's kind of just like landing. So, but you know that blocking, that blocking um, tight end stuff is is a thing we're the same the same the nineties and the two thousands anymore. Like, so right. don't worry about that too too much. All right, guys, um, we got close to a hundred people in here, man. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Again, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Appreciate it. Moving on to the offensive line, but it's not really too much to talk about because we don't really know. Due to those guys being in, you know, in shorts and help and this and in helmets, excuse me, shorts and helmets. But um, from the look standpoint, of course, the leader of the offensive line unit is Darius Washington. He looked really good out there. There was a couple of the guys that, from a look standpoint, um, really caught my attention. The guard, uh, Keandre Jones, the guard from Auburn, he looked really good as well. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on the offensive line from what we saw in, in that limited portion? You know, as far as just shorts. Yeah, I mean, again, what we want is we want to know what these guys look like. Like, do they look good in shorts? If you don't look good in shorts, I mean, that's a bad thing. Um, you know, it's cool when you like, you know, you can get it done in pads, but I need to look, I need to see they call it the big uglies for a reason. And you know, so we got some guys. A lot of people ask me about Richie Leonard, and I didn't really get a chance to see much. Um, going in, I'll go to another. I'm gonna go to one of the padded practices. I'll probably check out two or three more practices when it's all said and done. Um, but I'll tell you this four years ago, we didn't look like we belong. Right now, when I go out there and I look at that field, I look on both lines, I'm looking at because people keep talking about we need the body types, we need the body types, we need the body types. I'm looking at this. I'm looking and I'm seeing body types, and that's yeah, something that we don't that we haven't had in a while. Agree. Those guys are looked apart as far as the body type, and we was there a couple of years ago when we saw that, and it was some questions in regards to down. Do we even look like a a form a formidable ACC team? But of course, two years ago we saw the changes with um, the 2022 team, and we told people like, "Hey, look out for you know." The nose is coming a year, and you know, two years later, that shit hasn't changed. We just pretty much improved that look year after year. All right, moving on to the defense. Of course, defensive line, the same thing from a look standpoint. Josh Farmer, Farmer, Farmer wasn't out there um, as well. Didn't need to see him, anything like that. But um, from a look standpoint, first person off the bus is who? Shit, Daryl Jackson. Oh, <laughs> shit. Fuck that. Like, I just did a thing, and I didn't even realize how, like, um, if you want to know what it looks like, so um, shout out to my producer, Miles. He took my, my joke about um, in the arms of an angel, like for 30 cents a day, we can get a kid, we can save a kid from the University of Miami and feed him properly. But go look at um, um, 
Jackson from a year ago and his arms. His arms kind of look like crab legs. Like, you know, when you crack a crab leg and you pull it out and it's just straight. That boy, like, and Miles put the picture. And then he put a picture of what was shown from practice on Tuesday and what I saw today on Thursday. That's a grown-ass man. That dude is huge. Um, and just to even talking about Coach, what, um, what Boucher said, for him to be, what, 6'2", 195 as a sophomore in high school? As a sophomore in high school now. To see where he's at now, um, it's going to be great. Um, but just even thinking about, um, you know, he's not – I don't want to – I don't know who to describe this kid as. He's not um, – um, Brendan, um, the 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 D tackle we just had, I can't think of his name. Um, he ain't him, but he's he's something like it. He's got the long hair. Um, the boy from um, from uh, Colorado Brady. State. Brady. Um, we saw Samson. KJ looked good, and um, was it Lion Lions? Lion, I can't think. Of number ninety five. Put on some extra weight, um, which we asked for. And again, so what it is is we got five guys that. We got five guys that look like they should be getting reps in rotation. Obviously, I think Farmer, your 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 Farmer and, and um, Jackson are your starters, um, and the other guys are definitely rotational guys. Going to be able to get in and get you some quality reps. Um, but I think what I saw from Lolo, uh, <laughs> and I don't know how to say this. This might be a pause moment. But you ever seen somebody so thick that they look short? Like it's just his whole body is just like I said, you know. Like he looked that tall, but you kind of put it in perspective. Like he's just built pretty solid, man. Some big guys. Yeah, and so like I, I'm um, that's really where to protect where you're weak at or where you don't have depth. You have to you have to win where you're strong, and where we have a lot of depth is at the defensive end spot. And I could just go through the list of who made a play, um, with the defensive ends. And so when you're talking about um, obviously Shay Tree Jr. looks the part. Um, it was great. Uh, Byron Turner made some play really good. Pat Payton s type play, um, mm-hmm. snuffing out a screen, um, being able to come off of from explosive position, jump vertically in the air, back the ball. Now might have been able to get the interception if he needed to. Obviously, Pat Payton is who he is. Um, you know, you, you're seeing a lot of guys um, make things happen. Um, the African Doris J nineteen, he's doing this thing. Um, you know. Just again, fun. Um, it's fun to have all these different names that you could potentially um, be able to get get into, man. But um, it's the only thing I did check, and this is where I fucked up at, and I'm gonna check it out tomorrow at pro day. Is I didn't get any juice, didn't get any juice, didn't get any snack. Like the whole the power was looking right. The whole construction thing kind of fucked everything up, man. Like um, I don't really know. Like I don't know where anything was at. So. It was hard to get the pretzels. They have pretzels, pickles, and, and grapes, and and I don't know if the juice is intact because we're a serious program when that Powerade is is sugary. So, yeah, some of the stuff I saw too, like I said, Pat Pate looked pretty well. Um, of course, MJ MJJ from a look standpoint looked really well, and of course the pass breaker, like you just stated. But again, we will know more once we get an actual pass and see what you know the defense line and offensive line look like moving forward. Let's jump to linebackers again. This is another position that is kind of here to miss. But I will say DJ Lundy looked very well as far as making plays in the past game, something we've been asking for, right? And also just moving more fluidly. So to get him back out of the portal with, you know, from the first touch with Colorado was big time for us because DJ Lundy, of course, is the unquestioned leader at the linebacker position. All you people who say we don't need DJ Lundy, fuck DJ Lundy, all this other bullshit. The bullshit. <laughs> Like, like, that motherfucker look good, man. Uh, you know, also Alabama, um, the Alabama kid um, was moving around well. Um, a lot of guys didn't give, didn't give Cryer his props. Cryer did some stuff. Um, Nicholson I got a little bit more information on Nicholson. Um, they were just saying Nicholson's problem last year was that he was just being – in Cali, he was just allowed to be a good athlete. Um, and he wasn't coached up on the nuances of the position. He actually played more running back than he did. So, like, um, you know, so that's kind of the big thing. So, like, again, I don't know how many linebackers people think we need. I wouldn't mind getting another one. But, like, you don't need to have a 10-deep linebacker room when you run a 4-2-5. You know, right. we need to be – we need to be – we need six, at most eight solid. And I think we got – 
four or five. I mean, I'm gonna be, I got news for you guys. If if we're on our third string linebacker, our um, expectations uh, might have to change depending upon where it's at in the season. So, like, um, that's just not something that we would want. But but I hate to get on this. I'm sorry about coming on late, but I got to hop off, CJ. Um, no, you good, bro. Appreciate you. But, but now, nah, man, all in all, I would say it's not as drastic as it was three years ago when I say this was the best spring. The um, expectations have changed, but I will say this. Um, I, I'm, I'm amazed at how little of a drop-off we had and what I'm seeing. So um, I, I got to bring my son. I got to bring the real best, the best person on the beat, James Anthony Coleman, the third, Trey. If, if, Trey, if Trey gives us a thumbs up, then I know we're good. Yeah, Trey, if Trey gives us a thumbs up, we'll, we'll be in for a real good season. But now I appreciate you, bro. Let the people know where they can find you at and follow you at. Um, Den Media Group on YouTube. I'll probably be doing something at 930 tonight. Um, y'all enjoy CJ's. I know Chris got sporadic, so I'll let everybody do that. Then I'll give a little bit longer before I go to the Cigar Lounge um, and go have some fun before I go work pro day tomorrow. Um, if you're not on YouTube, you can, you can see it on Twitter. It will be on my at Big Game James underscore 36 or at Den Media Group. We just don't re- respond to questions from there. Um, if you want to talk on the YouTube, you need to um, check out um, Den Media Group. Um, outside of that, we're trying to get that thing to 6,000 um, subs, up to 10,000. As I tell people, once we get to 10,000, um, once we get to 10,000 um, subs, I'm going to give away a ride on Reggie's truck, on my guy Reggie's truck. So, um, you know, we could get um, get Reggie. Matter of fact, I'll make gift a ride on Reggie's um, 18-wheeler um, on this show tonight. So my guy Reggie, yeah, I'm high, bro. Um, you know, proud of him. So, but anyways, man, that's the biggest thing, though. Appreciate you, TJ. No, I appreciate you, bro. All right, my apologies, guys. I've been having technical difficulties. Let's move on to the defensive back, man. Um, my baby. It was a lot of good stuff to see within the one-on-ones. Um, like I said, Greedy Vance had a pretty good day. He did get beat for that one play, but he also had a great play where he jammed the receiver and ended up breaking on the end cutting route, ended up picking it off. We had a couple interceptions. Um, Conrad Hussey had an amazing interception at 707. Real athletic, is supposed to play within the 707 pass scale. Kind of goes back to what we've been seeing last year with Conrad Hussey. The athleticism flashes off the boards. Um, great athleticism. Shit is pretty much off the damn charts. He made that play. I think Conrad is going to have a big year. Only thing with him, like I said, just get more reps, more familiar with the playbook, more reps, game slow down, that type of deal. Conrad's going to have a big year. Um, Charles Lester and, and Dwayne McCoy, like I said, they were battling pretty much for the entire day. He made a couple big play, a couple decent plays, but I, I like the way he kept battling. I think Dwayne got the best of him today. But again, that's going to happen when you have high caliber guys going against high caliber guys. Earl Little Jr., he was in the green jersey for the most part today, but he made a really, really good pass breakup at 707 as well. I think he's going to be a playmaker for us. Was mostly in the nickel spot um, today from what I saw, moving around in the nickel spot. We're going to do it. We're going to see a lot of different things with Earl Blitz and things like that. But overall, man, that defense is fast, very fast. Top to bottom. If you guys remember the comments that Adam Fuller said a couple weeks ago in regards to tour duty, he was saying how fast the, the, the defense is. He wasn't lying. That defense is very, very fast, um, fast flow, very aggressive. Again, the pass wasn't known, but it, the defense is supposed to be ahead of the offense in regards to um, this portion. Well, I guess, yeah, this portion of, of the year, this portion of spring practice. So it wasn't a surprise to see the defense dominate and, and, and move around a little bit. But what stood out again was the speed that we saw from the defense. But, again, the defensive backs look pretty damn good. AZ. AZ, like I said, he's going to be the best corner in the ACC. He was matched up with Benson for the most part in one-on-ones. Got the better of Benson. Benson had a couple catches on him, but AZ, he looks the part. He's he's going to be one of those guys. A Quintarius Jones, Quintarius Jones, excuse me, number 16. The kid is going to be good. You guys kind of saw him flash in the Georgia Bowl game. Looks the part. Great size, 6'2". He's going to be great this year. Fentrell Cypress had a great day as well. People don't realize, man, Fentrell played zone coverage for the most part those three years at um, University of Virginia. Come to Florida State last year, 
and you go to a team where you're playing damn near man, well, not damn near, you're really playing man coach like 85, 90 percent of the game. His own coverage kind of goes out of the window. And he still had a pretty damn good year to me. Came up a couple passes here and there, but that's going to happen when you play that much man coverage. But I say that to say this, I do think this upcoming year, he's going to be even better than he was last year. The secondary last year was damn good, but potential-wise for this year, it has the potential to be even better this year. So we'll see how things play out. But overall, though, for what I saw in spring, from this spring practice, that, that second spring practice, of course, this is one day. But the tools are there. I don't think there will be any drop-off as far as what we have from a competitive standpoint versus the rest of the ACC. I do think FSU will be competing for ACC championship this upcoming year. Go ahead and put those rooms to, char to charter, like I said earlier. If you win the ACC within this new playoff format, you should be good to go. I'm going to say should because we saw the bullshit should have happened this past year. But, again, I do think we'll be fine. won't be any drop-off. Um, I do think Norvell has gotten over the hump in the first couple of years. Everything we have now is just going to be rolling. It's just going to be rolling from a program standpoint. So I do believe we'll be we'll be perfectly fine moving forward with that. But again, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel. I do want to open up for a second to call us. If you guys want to want to jump in and have any questions for me, have a little conversation, let's up, open up the phone lines for a second. And from a recruiting standpoint, there was a lot of recruits out there, too. It was a lot of young local recruits, too. A lot of young kids that should be pretty good within the upcoming years for F – well, not for FSU, for as far as recruiting rankings and things like that. It was good and kind of 36, kind of – well, James Coleman, rather, kind of mentioned it earlier. It was good for FSU to get those guys on campus because a lot of those guys have P5 offers all over the country right now. So to get that young talent – from Tallahassee, I'm talking a bunch of freshmen, sophomores, a couple of juniors. That's going to be really good within the couple, uh, coming years. To have them on campus and to try to keep that local talent home was very, very was, – was a good thing to see. I guess y'all been a little shiny, a little bachelor today. We probably won't open up any callers. But, again, man, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have a recruiting video coming out pretty soon because FSU does have a pretty big weekend. It's upcoming weekend for uh, the March 23rd. Uh, Saturday or well, Friday through Saturday, the Legacy Weekend. Some former players will be in town as well. We'll make sure we have you guys updated with that. Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, go Nose.